Welcome, you guys are listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs. I am your host, Angie, and I'm here with my hubby. I'm Larry. We're doing these a little bit differently tonight. We're going to have some special guests, but we're going to be taking call-ins. So if you guys have any questions for our guests, you guys can call in. The number to call in is going to be 706 TNC TNC zero again seven zero six eight six two eight six two zero and you guys can call in and feel free to ask any questions of our guests tonight we have with us a special guest we have Ricky and Bobby Coffee and you guys um, want to tell everybody just a little bit about you guys and your life out on the road yeah um, I'm Bobby and. Uh uh, we, we founded LGBTQ plus truck driver network and, um, we are a husband team that runs pharmaceutical out on the road. And, um, it's just a, been a really fun experience for us to be able to be out here and meet, um, some really awesome drivers and network with others. And, uh, I haven't got a chance to meet you guys yet, but soon enough on the road, we'll catch up with each other, but, um, uh, it's just been a really awesome experience with us. Um, uh, trucking's just been really cool so how long have you guys been out there trucking together as a team um we've been out for five years what's been the what do you think's been the best part for you guys out there now do you guys do all all the states or do you guys do more regional um we pretty much uh we pretty much run new york um New York to Minnesota, Minnesota to Texas. So we stay more on the the East Coast more than anywhere. Um, so that's pretty much as far ever as we get. Um, we occasionally get a California run or something out west, but it doesn't happen very often. Um, and they kind of keep us a little di- localized when it comes to pharmaceutical. They just want you to go from one spot to another spot. There's no, like, stopping in between. So... Yeah, Next we little. needed to do pharmaceuticals way back, so we we remember those. We did actually did the COVID vaccinations for quite a while. Yeah, yeah, we still run COVID vaccines. So, <laughs> yeah, we still we still run all, all those same things. So, um, you know, and and, it, and it's fun. Um, I don't know. I find the joy in trucking. A lot of people, um, a lot of people get burnt out really easy. So I, I say about trucking, you learn really fast whether it's for you or not because either. Either you're with it and you can roll with it or you can't. Um, it's one of those careers that has a way to let you know really fast if it's for you. Absolutely. It really does. We do have a caller. Tom, you want to bring in, uh, looks like our caller's name is Green. Might have a question for us. Yes. Hello. Welcome to Tail Lights with the Bombs. How are you doing tonight? I'm alive. Well, hey, that's a good thing. We have our host, we yeah. have our guests, uh, Ricky and Bobby. Did you have a question for them? No, not at all. I was just listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, Bobby and Ricky, I wanted to give you a chance. Your truck is amazing, by the way. You guys have got a super size sleeper, and it is a pride truck. It says Expo on the side of it. You want to tell us a little bit about your truck? Yeah, um, actually, the truck's getting ready to be traded out within the next 60 days, so we're actually going to get a newer one. But as of right now, um, you know, it makes a whole lot of difference um, driving the ARI Super Slippers, just having um, a toilet, a shower, all the conveniences, a a full kitchen. Um, It makes it a little bit easier to eat healthier. And um, even though it still is hard to like get into places, you know, going to Walmart, it's not as easy as pulling up in your car. So I try to Instacart, I try to do different things as much as possible. Um, but being in pharmacy, it still, you know, creates a problem because, you know, you um, don't really get to stop in between anywhere. So you kind of have to always wait until after you're completely, you know, I used to be able to stop whenever I was under a load and we can't stop under a load. So, um, but the truck itself, you know, um, it's, it's just a pretty awesome truck, and I, and I really enjoy the interaction that I get from drivers. Um, it's not, you know, it, it is a, a pride flag on the side of it, and it's done in pride colors, but it's really just um, a visible statement about everybody. It's, it's not just about being LGBTQ. It is about just 
everybody being equal within driving. And um, I, I do a lot of talking about um, driver's rights and, and everybody being equal and all drivers means all drivers. Um, I, I don't, you know, I don't care what another person does in their bedroom. I just, um, I, I, you know, I try to push that as much as possible that we're all out here doing the same things and we're all doing the same loads and it's hard enough as is. So I talk a lot about that because um, I just try to support everybody as a whole, as a network, you know, of drivers. It's so hard being out here sometimes away from families and missing funerals and uh, people don't realize the sacrifice you have sometimes. And um, the truck makes it really nice to be on the road. But at the same time, a lot of people's like, how do you park that? How do you go on regular docks? And I do, I still have to fight and get on regular docks that day cabs, you know, take time to like fight to get onto. And, um, you can't really park when it comes to, uh, rest areas and stuff. Um, people's like, Oh, you can just get parking. No, it, uh, that's why you see a lot of them park down the, down the ramp. And it's because, um, the rest areas, they're too short when you go to try to pull out. Um, so you either have to, go up on the sidewalk or, or, <laughs> or get creative a little bit. So it, it's a blessing, but it's also um, way more challenging. So that's one of the things we've been worried about because we're supposed to be getting one as well. And I know that's been Larry's biggest concern is that we're supposed to be getting a super sleeper as well. And he's like, the wheelbase is going to be so much longer. And a lot of the places that we already go to are really not made for super sleepers. So that's our biggest concern. <laughs> it actually limits us a little bit, you know, like there's like 12 places I think that we can't even go to. They don't, they won't allow us in there for the shippers and receivers. So it limits us a little bit to places that we can go to. And even when you're in a truck stop, you know, you don't think about it, but I mean, I'll park beside a long nose truck and I'm still longer than them. Like I'm sitting at their, at their grill pretty much. And if someone tries to go, like if I'm in a regular space and there's a line of trucks in front of me and more and more of those more narrow lots, I have already closed off to where if someone's trying to park on my right side or left side, it's going to be a challenge for them. And then it, it's a challenge for me. If I have to leave out in the middle of the night, I've already blocked myself in. So you kind of have to always think about where you're at. Can you get out? Can you, you know, because it gets pretty creative. Parking is a problem for us. And um, so you just have to get a little creative and try to come in a little bit earlier to shut down and park more in the end spaces that has a clear area to pull straight out of. Um, it, it gets creative, but... <laughs> I was going to tell you, you did mention a little bit about your Facebook group, and I know that's where most of people can find information and follow you guys. Can you tell us a little bit about your Facebook group? Um, say the name again so everybody knows how to find it, and just a little bit more about the group in case somebody would like to join. Okay. Um, yeah, it's LGBTQ Plus Truck Driver Network. And um, what we do is basically it started as a group. We actually are an organization and a nonprofit organization registered out of Florida. And, um, you know, uh, it's, it's really about sharing life on the road. Um, I love that people share that we are drivers and everything, but I, I, you know, we have, uh, all kinds of members that shares them running around their scooters and it's just a network and, and just an area for everybody to be themselves and laugh and talk and, and be carefree. But we also help each other too. There's a lot of depression, anxiety, and a lot of things that a lot of people go through. So, um, I take anywhere from 20 to 30 calls a day, sometimes up to 50 calls a day from different people um, that just needs um, a person to talk to or just to, just just to have someone that's in their corner to support them. And so I talk about that, but then we also do um, vetting. We have a lgbtqvetted.com, which, which is a program that we do as well um, for uh, LGBTQ-friendly places to work. And, and so we kind of vet the companies and talk to them about scenarios and, um, and it's all about education and awareness. It's, it's really all we're doing is just educating people and, and opening those boundaries of conversations that people don't want to talk about and, um, getting them the access that they need. Um, another thing we do is driver memorial program. I mean, there's just all these little things that we, we've invested in the drivers because a lot of people don't realize that. Over 3,273 drivers left home um, last year, and they didn't come back. 
they, they passed away on the road. So um, we try to extend that out, whether you are LGBTQ or not. It's just a, it's just all drivers inclusively, but we send a letter of condolence to the family. We make um, t-shirts that have like the angel wings in the background of the driver's picture. Um, trying, just trying to give extra support to the families that, that lose the driver on the road. And um, that actually started because I lost one of my best friends on the road and unexpectedly. So it's just one of those the group is just about being yourself, having fun, sharing pictures. We cry together. We laugh together. We um, do a lot of events throughout the year, trying to uh, a Christmas event. Uh, I don't know. We just do a lot of fun things. And um, we try to connect about being drivers. But some people don't have families and some people don't have too many friends out here. So that that's what the page is for. It's just to connect and and be yourself and, and share that with everybody. And that is so important. We're going to take just a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I do want to talk more about the driver memorial program for sure. Um, and then we'll definitely talk more about your group so that we, we can make sure that everybody gets a chance to visit it. Yeah, that sounds great. This info blog on TNCRadio.live is brought to you by the Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Three simple tips to improve your CSA score. There are millions of drivers on the road every day. That's why trucking companies must stay compliant with federal safety regulations. Staying compliant with federal safety regulations not only helps keep yourself and others on the road safe, but also helps improve your safety scores. A good CSA score is extremely important to the success of a trucking company. Drivers that have a good score have access to preferred loads and reduced insurance rates. Here's some tips on how to improve your CSA score. What is the CSA program? CSA, Compliance Safety Accountability, is a program of the FMCSA that holds truck drivers accountable for their role in safety. The main goal of the CSA program is to prevent accidents from happening on the road and to identify high-risk commercial motor carriers. Although the FMCSA runs the CSA program, they don't issue CSA scores. The FMCSA created an online safety measurement system that records data like roadside inspections and crash reports from the last two years. The data is updated monthly and assigned to your DOT number. The FMCSA then organizes the SMS data into seven categories, often referred to as basics, behavior, analysis, and safety improvement. How to improve your CSA score? When it comes to CSA scores, the lower the scores, the better. Your CSA score determines whether or not you'll get a visit from the DOT. Over time, your CSA score can be improved by making safety a core focus of your trucking company. Prioritize pre-trip inspections. A large percentage of CSA violations are truck-related. This could all be prevented with a pre-trip inspection. Pre-trip inspections are one of the most important things you need to do before any trip. A simple pre-trip inspection helps you get in tune with your truck before you drive. It lets you know if anything's wrong with the truck or needs to be fixed before hitting the road. Not only are you required by law to perform a pre-trip inspection, but it also keeps you and others safe while on the road. Check out our blog, Four Reasons Why Pre-Trip Inspections Are Important for Truck Drivers. Be more cautious of who you hire. Hiring drivers with a good driving record is crucial if you want to have a good CSA score. Remember that CSA scores use your driver's crash records to calculate your score. So if you hire a driver with a bad driving history, you're taking on more of a risk. Challenge Citations You have at least two years to challenge a violation. If you challenge a violation and it gets dismissed, it'll be removed from your company's CSA score. 
The Truckers Network has teamed up with CDL Consultants and CDL 360 to provide a full spectrum of safety, compliance, and audit services to our members. CDL Consultants has successfully reduced or dismissed over 35,000 violations and tickets. They've worked with tens of thousands of drivers and companies, including many top 100 carriers. If you need to fight a violation, search for a CDL Consultant on the Truckers Network webpage at app.thetruckersnetwork.com. Trucking Moves America Forward, or TMAF, is boosting the image of the industry by telling the story of trucking. And your story can be part of it. Upload a photo, tell us what you love about trucking, or send us a story about a good deed or charitable act in trucking. Be sure to follow us on social media and contact us through truckingmovesamerica.com. That's truckingmovesamerica.com. Industry movement Trucking Moves America Forward is telling the story of the industry. Our safety champions, the women of trucking, independent contractors, the next generation of truckers, and more. Help us promote the best of our industry. Share your story and what you love about trucking. Share images of a moment you're proud of. And join us on social media. Learn more at truckingmovesamerica.com. Welcome back. You are listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs, and we have been speaking with uh, Bobby and Ricky Coffee. And we do have a caller on the line. We have Jess with us. Um, I believe, Jess, you had a question in regards to how to vet a trucking company. You want to go ahead and ask your question? Uh, yeah, so I heard him say something about um, vetting companies that we drive for and stuff like that. So I was just wondering if you could, you know, express more about if we drive for a company that we already know is LGBTQ plus friendly, how would we go about letting you guys know how to get them put on your list? Okay. Well, um, thanks for calling in with that, Jess. Um, basically we have the LGBTQ vetted.com. And, um, when you go to that page, uh, you'll scroll down through there and you can see all the contact information at the bottom uh, where you can reach out to Denise. And um, Denise is our uh, senior diversity officer that takes care of the vetting process. Um, or you can reach out to the page as well, the group page or Facebook page. Um, but the, the best way to do it would be to go to lgbtqvetted.com. And um, her information, her phone number and everything is on there. And um, it's actually just a, a pretty simple process, but we don't approve everybody. Um, I do want to just re reiterate that. And the only reason is because we do have our own process of uh, speaking with the companies to make sure that how they would react to situations or scenarios, you know, um, if another employee is harassing another employee in the parking lot because of them being, um, for whatever reason it may be, may be um, you know, we, we talk about these things and we, and we want to hear what, what their, uh, recourse or will be on that. So, um, but that is the easiest way to start the process and get the information to us so we can talk to them. And when you do that, um, try to also, um, if you know the information of who we need to talk to within the company, whether it's a, you know, whoever they have, what representative and what their extension and stuff would be, would be great. But if not, um, we can uh, call definitely about it. Um, we're very interested at, at creating this network um, within the page so that um, it's just a safe place. It's a safe place and, and no one's really doing that. And, and it's just something that, it's all part of this network that I'm trying to create just for all the drivers to have a safe place to work for everybody. Which I think is so important because the last thing we need is for, and I know personally that I've know several drivers I've been with companies that, you know, I, I wish they had gone to different companies because they've been harassed in some shape or form. So it's good having a place that you can go to, to get the reliable information. Right. Right. And, and you know, and it's so many things, it's not, like I said, it's not just for always LGBTQ. Um, it's for everyone, um, you know, and it's important even as um, for you all. It, do you want to work for a company that is is not supportive of, it, of all the drivers, of who they are, whether they're, 
it's their ethnic background or, or you know, to me, I want to work for someone who accepts everybody. So um, it definitely would stand out in my mind if I were searching for another place of employment um, that I would like to work for somewhere like that. So um, we have too much hay down the road anyway. And so I try to um, filter that out and, and anything, you know, people do get upset with the truck a little bit sometimes and they get upset with other things. But the thing is, um, I literally, I don't fuel it. A lot of people like to fuel the fire and, and I don't, um, I'd rather befriend that person and let that person see me for who I am, which is way more than just a gay man. Um, so, you know, I want, I want them to see me as a driver, like everybody else. I just choose to love someone of the same sex. That's it. That's my choice. Nobody else's. And so that, that's the only thing that I'm doing, you know, but as a, you know, we started as a group and it just grew and then ended up being an organization and then ended up being nonprofit. And then, so we're doing all these steps and just growing and, um, and, and it's great. It's great. And I just, and I'm enjoying the ride. I'm enjoying the experience. I'm enjoying seeing all the pictures of people sharing their lives on the road and their pets. And, you know, so it's just, um, it's been very rewarding just being myself. It's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> no, I completely understand. I was going to ask you, because the, the Pride logo on the side of your truck, I was going to ask you, for the most part, do you feel that you get m- mostly positive comments? And like you said, I know you said you've had some negative. How do you handle that situation? Um, sometimes. If you catch me on a snappy day when I'm dead. <laughs> we all have those days and and I will say something like you know does an inanimate object threaten your sexuality or I'll say something snappy and um and then sadly enough you know um when I've said something like that you know I'm like it's a pride flag it's colors you know why would you be so offended um you know so I'll say certain things and, um, and just cause some days it just, it's really hard to sometimes just let it roll off your back. It just is sometimes, um, it's not always the best way to act, but I will tell you 90% of the time, maybe 95% of the time we get people beeping the horns and thumb up and, um, just being, I don't know. It's so rewarding. And there was a lady that pulled into the truck stop. And she was emotional and she was in tears and she had come up to me when I was fueling up and she said, I just want to tell you, I was having a horrible day and I pulled in and seen your truck and it just made my day. And, um, her daughter was a lesbian and it just, she said, seeing this on the road out here in this industry, she said, um, it just makes my day. And, um, that's why I do it. That's that's a simple, and that's why we do it. It's just for everyone to understand, and that's why. It, it, it has nothing to do with all the other things that people like to jump to the conclusion. It, it's literally just because there's people out there that needs to see it. And, Absolutely. And so, you know, if you don't understand it, that's okay. I respect that. I, I do. I respect that. I, you know... I don't know. I, that's just who I am. I, I respect everybody. If you, if you want to fly a flag that represents you on the side of your truck, even if it offends me, I will tell you, I'll be the first to tell you that you have the right to do it and do it. Do it. I think that's the hardest thing that I ran into because I am the, uh, we are the parents of a, a lesbian daughter who recently just got married. And I know as a mama bear me, it's so hard sometimes when you see the people, you know, given my daughter and her wife, the looks and it's so hard, like you said, to let things just roll off your back. Sometimes <laughs> it's just like yep. the mother and bear, the mother bear me just wants to come out and protect them, you know, but you can't. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, you know, but you just have to, everyone has these moments where you can't just let it go. And I may not be your proudest moment, but at the same time, you know, you'll say something and I, I don't ever argue with anyone. I don't ever do anything like negative, negative. Like I, tr- I, I don't have time for that. And <laughs> I just don't have time for it. Um, I, I, I try to always take whatever negative comes my way and spin it into something positive. 
And um, I think that's the best thing you can do in life. Uh, we're judged and, and by way too many things in life to deal with small things like this. So, you know, um, we have so much stress and we're, we're trying to get there on time and we're doing all this stuff. And, you know, when in trucking, you're paying attention to traffic, you're trying to, well, I try to radio karaoke and nobody wants to hear that, but I will tell you that I do that all the way down the highway. <laughs> and, <laughs> but you know, you get in your zone and you're going and, you know, but, and I do use my CB radio. I depend on that. Um, I do hear, um, you know, some things every now and then, but it's really not as much as you would think. It really has been very positive. Um, no matter, and it doesn't matter where I'm at in the country. I kind of thought that maybe different areas may be a little bit different, but it doesn't matter where we go. We've had a lot of really positive feedback, people taking selfies. Some of the things I don't like was, you know, people taking selfies while in their car and they're trying to like ride beside me while we're going like 65, 70 mile an hour down the road. And, you know, that's not feeling so safe because here's a girl trying to take a selfie through the window. Like, you know, anyway, it, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, that's not a safe thing at all. <laughs> I'm like, and, and I'm like, what do I do? Like, I can't just pull over and I'm not going to stop. So I just try to maintain my speed and in, in my lane, but here's someone else trying to take a selfie of someone. Yeah. So there's, there's things that happen and, you know, but that's just trucker life. Absolutely. So. Well, we're going to take another commercial break real quick. Just as a reminder, you guys can call in to ask questions. The number to call in is going to be 706-TNC-TNC-0 or 706-862-8620. And we'll be back in just a few minutes to finish our conversation with Bobby. Be sure to listen to Building Strong Minds with Dr. Chris, Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, right here on TNCRadio.live. Hi, I'm Dr. Christopher Cortman, and now for the Mental Health Minute. The great psychotherapist, Maxi Maltzby, once wrote that there are five ways, five criteria to assess whether our thoughts are rational or not. In his opinion, we only wanted to think rational thoughts. An irrational thought is actually something that's going to create emotional pain and get us in trouble in some way or another. So here they are, the five criteria for rational thinking. First, is my thought in line with objective reality? In other words, is it true or am I exaggerating and creating falsehoods? Secondly, is it likely to make me feel the way I want to feel? Again, is this a thought that promotes my mental health or is it something that makes me feel frightened or anxious or resentful? Thirdly, is it problem solving? Rational thinking should solve problems, not create bigger ones. Number four, is it in line with my long-term best interest? Rational thoughts are not only good for me in the here and now, but they help me in the long term. And again, gratitude, optimism, forgiveness. That promotes my long-term best interest. And finally, and this one doesn't always apply, but... Is this thought likely to get me in conflict with other people? If the answer to that one is yes, then it's usually not a rational thought. Try to get five out of five when you assess your thinking. And if you don't, change your thinking. Join Tom Kelly and the rest of the team each day on the morning grind. Then stay tuned for an encore presentation of last night's Landline Now. Weekdays on TNCRadio.live. I'm Shelley Johnson with Kathy Takaro. You can hear us Tuesdays on TNCRadio.live at 8 p.m. Eastern on Women Road Warriors. And don't miss Steve Summers' Overnight Drive right here on TNCRadio.live. Weeknights, midnight to 5 a.m. Eastern. Brought to you by Hot Shot Secret.
Welcome back. You are listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs, and I have Bobby here with us. And he has a Facebook group called the LGBTQ Plus Truck Driver Network and Driver Support that you guys can find on Facebook to join. And we were talking a little bit before uh, the break. I want you to just talk a little bit more about the Driver Memorial Program, which I think is a great thing that you've got going on. Yeah, um, the Driver Memorial Program um, is really just about uh, the families, the families that are left after when truckers pass away. I um, started thinking about this because I had a, a dear friend that passed away in a truck and then started looking at the statistics and looking at how many drivers leave home and don't come back. And so I was thinking about that and just thinking about the fact of, of um, what does that family get? If, if that's the only trucker in the family and that's their only source of income, you know, there's, there's nothing else. Like, you know, the big, all the big companies and everything, nobody sends anything to them. So I was starting to think about all that. And that's uh, when I come up with, I know, I know it doesn't sound like much, but we do like a car charm. We do a letter of condolence. We reach out to the families, just letting them know that, Hey, you know, we, we care. And um, I just trying to reach out that extra little bit, just, just to show people. And so we do like a t-shirt and um, that's all funded by the organization um, and it's just a an extra added touch to support drivers um, that have passed away while being while being out on the road, and um, it was just something I wanted to do. I, I know it sounds may not sound like much, but like to it, no, I think that sounds- it, it just it's just something extra that I just feel that is needed um, because we work such hard jobs and we're gone from our families, you know, and and it just. Uh, it was just something that I felt was really needed. So when I, when I talked to our group, our organization about it and everybody was on game with it and um, it started with Doug Mosier and um, his wife, Tabitha, they used to uh, be out here together and then she went home for a little while and, uh, and then he passed away unexpectedly. So um, it, it just, it's something really important to my heart because it happened, you know, to someone so close to me. And, uh, I, I'm so sorry. And you know what? That's the biggest thing is there's, n- we lose so many drivers every year. I think what you're doing is amazing. Real quick. If somebody wanted to make a donation to try to help towards a driver memorial fund, how could they do that? Um, well, we actually have a couple ways to do that. Um, we have a PayPal link and we have all the links on our page. So if you actually go to LGBTQ truck driver network.com, you can do donations anonymously or however you want to right there on the page the links are there for to do that um and uh and then we um have been taking this on the road a little bit just just to uh, let people see what we're doing and and going to events and functions and we we did uh the mid-america truck show and we were the first organization that was lgbtq to ever be at the show set up in the 50 years of the history of the show. So wow. that was another thing. <laughs> and um, we're just trying to break those boundaries and barriers that people put up. And it's just because they don't know. So the only way you get people to know who you are is education and talk, talking about things and opening those lines of, of conversation. And, um, you know, trucking so diverse. And so it's just, open those lines of conversation and talking to people. So, but that, we yeah, actually, go, I'm so sorry. I meant to tell you, we actually have a caller that you and I both know. <laughs> Jess Graham yeah. is actually on the air and she has a question for you. Okay. Hey, Bobby, how's it going? Hi, Jess. Hey. Um, I have a question for you. So we know it's pride month and um, I've been trying to give out as many mom hugs as I can to as many LGBTQ plus that I come across because I give really good mom hugs. Um, but how can organizations such as Real Women in Truck and how can uh, companies carry the, the diversity and inclusion and, and message of pride throughout the year and not just in June um, when everybody changes their logo to rainbow? Well, um, you know, for me, I feel that again everything is just through education and awareness and um a couple things that we are doing um on the vetted page is not just 
um, vetting companies, but we actually are giving out this small logo um, that you've been vetted by um, LGBTQ plus truck driver network. So if any organizations or anybody wants um, that to be done, they can also reach out to Denise and this small logo can go on your website. But I also feel that, you know, bring up these conversations with people, talk to people, you know, talk about it on your page. You have a platform. So all these people have amazing platforms. Absolutely. And and use it, use it to your ability. You know, um, everybody has been so great to us and, um, you know, I got pulled on stage when we wasn't at, and it was a moment, it was just an amazing moment that I had a moment to to talk and then um, um, Sheree Moore had put me on stage and he trucking and she just was absolutely amazing. Jess was there, they were amazing and, and Desiree, there's so many people that made all this possible and having that network of support from Taylor Barker and, and all these different and, and the G's and so many people have supported this so i think we just need to be talking about it more and letting people know that we're doing the same job i don't expect anything special and i don't expect anything different but talking about it and opening up those lines of conversation with the companies and the bigger and the, and the other organizations that's how we create a network for all of us to be it's so. just that was an amazing question Absolutely. want to tell us a little bit about your organization Oh, Real Women in Trucking, we are, the real is not just for women. People have that misconception. It's just a bunch of fiery, fiery ladies that got together. <laughs> we started as a protest organization, and we've grown into, you know, a nationally recognized advocate for all drivers. And we don't just focus on women's issues. We focus on truck parking and training, entry-level driver training, which Anytime there's a conversation about diversity and inclusion and making sure that everybody has a seat at the table, we have fought and we are trying to drag every other person with us that needs to be at that table. So real just means if you're going to talk about drivers, you better have some real drivers there talking. Right. That's very true. And that's just leading by example. Great organizations. I love them both. We need more like you guys. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, you know, really. they're just leading by example, and it, and it's definitely someone that I want to take our organization to be. Um, you know, Jess, Desiree, all the different people that have supported us has been truly amazing, and um, and I you support know, everybody out we, there. We've gotten some flack over the years, but mostly because we're not afraid to talk about those uncomfortable issues that people really don't want to talk about. You know, sexual harassment and in the, the companies is systematic. It's industry-wide. There is no company that is not experiencing it. And so that's one of the things that we talk about regardless of whether, you know, you want to. So that that's where we kind of, um, you know, gotten some nice, friendly nicknames, but... You know, we just keep going, and we keep saying um, until somebody listens. You know, and I, I'm glad that we've been able to stand behind Bobby and the Truck Driver Network because it is so important. Anytime one person is marginalized, we're all at risk for it. Right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jess, for your call. I appreciate it. Bobby and I both know you, and we appreciate your call. All right. Talk to you guys later. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and Bobby, we do actually have one more caller. Uh, we have Denise with us who's on hold, and she had a question also about the driver network group. Denise, Denise is you there. Oh, Denise, yes. Hi. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't really have a question. Hi, Bobby. Um, I wanted to... Uh, uh, I'm Denise Johnson. Uh, Bobby mentioned me a time or two uh, in his interview. I just wanted to mention real quick about the uh, LGBT vetted. Uh, we kind of got started with this, this program, uh, because so many drivers are, are still somewhat afraid 
to uh, let their employers know that they're lesbian, gay, transgender, uh, and especially with the transgender community. You know, they, they go to work as as Bob, but then they're in the uh, they're in the process of transitioning to become Mary. And you know, there's still uh, so much uh, uh, bigotry and and hatred out there over the transgender community. Uh, so much misunderstanding that uh, perhaps they're a little bit afraid to come out and have the conversation with their employers. And so one of the, this is kind of what got us started was, uh, we'll have that conversation for them. They don't have to mention anything. We don't drop any names or anything like that. Uh, but we will talk to, uh, these companies and, and even the new truck driving schools, uh, just anything to do with, uh, the transportation industry. Uh, and, and that's kind of how we got started, uh, speaking up for the drivers, uh, that don't have a voice or feel like they can't have a voice. And it has just really morphed more so into, uh, as Bobby said, it, it's our, it's the slogan for our organization. All means all. And, uh, that's just the bedrock of how we operate. And, and it's just, it's, it's very, very, very good. I've just been, uh, very impressed with Bobby and the things that they have been, uh, doing with this organization. And I'm just very proud to be a part of it. Thank you so much for calling in. Go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, I was just going to say, thank you for calling in Denise. You know, she's been an amazing, uh, attribute to our to our organization and what we're doing and um and we're just here you know we're here doing the same thing as everybody else and just be yourself you know pride month is an amazing month but pride is 24 7 uh 365 days a year and um to me i live it every day this so i'm very proud of who i am and no matter whether you're gay straight the- bi transgender um, it does not matter be proud of who you are and it's, a, it's too stressful out here as a driver um, to worry about all the other things. So just be you. Absolutely. We're going to take another co- commercial break. When we come back, I do want to talk a little bit more about your slogan, All Drivers Mean All. And we'll be back in just a few minutes with our interview with Bobby. Thank you. The Truckers Network at app.thetruckersnetwork.net. Everything truck drivers need to know about sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is an issue that affects one out of three truck drivers. Truck drivers who drive tired may be unaware of how much their lack of sleep affects their driving. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration attributes 2.2% of all driving accident fatalities to drowsy driving. Well, there's not a law in place that requires truck drivers to get testing for sleep apnea. If you suspect you have sleep apnea, stay with us to learn more about sleep apnea and how it can affect truck drivers. What is sleep apnea? Sleep apnea is a potentially serious sleep disorder that causes you to have pauses in your breathing or take shallow breaths during sleep. It's an extremely common issue that affects millions of people in the United States. If you snore loudly during the night or still feel tired after a full night's rest, you might have sleep apnea. According to the Mayo Clinic, the main types of sleep apnea are obstructive sleep apnea, the more common form that occurs when throat muscles relax, central sleep apnea, which occurs when your brain doesn't send proper signals to the muscles that control breathing, complex sleep apnea syndrome, also known as treatment emergent central sleep apnea, occurs when someone has both obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Symptoms of Sleep Apnea According to the Sleep Foundation, all three types of sleep apnea share certain common symptoms. Disrupting breathing in which a person's respiration can become labored or even stop for up to a minute at a time. Excessive daytime sleepiness. Morning headaches, irritability, limited attention span, or difficulty thinking clearly. Many of these symptoms arise because of poor sleep and decreased oxygen levels that occur as a result of interrupted breathing. Some additional symptoms are connected to obstructive sleep apnea, snoring, including snoring that's especially loud and involves gasping, choking, or snorting that may cause a person to briefly wake up, morning sore throat or dry mouth, frequent need to wake up to urinate. 
causes and treatment options for sleep apnea. Sleep apnea occurs when the airway becomes blocked while sleeping. Here are some common causes of an increase in airway blockage. Being overweight, sedative medication, alcohol, family history of sleep apnea, smoking cigarettes, sleeping on your back, nasal congestion. If you suspect you have sleep apnea, reach out to your doctor to get a treatment plan going. Avoiding treating your sleep apnea can result in losing the ability to operate a commercial motor vehicle. Most often, treatment plans will require you to have a CPAP machine in your truck. The CPAP machine helps pump oxygen to you while you sleep. In addition to using the CPAP machine, your doctor may recommend exercising, losing weight, or using different oral appliances that help hold open your airways. As a truck driver, it's crucial to take care of yourself because trucking is such a difficult and demanding job. At times, it can be challenging to take care of your health. Sleep apnea is a real issue in the trucking industry. We encourage all drivers to be aware of the symptoms and to get help if they suspect they have sleep apnea. This info blog was brought to you by The Truckers Network on app.thetruckersnetwork.net. TNC Radio Live, your commercial driver navigation station. Hi, I'm Hope Savara. Join us every Monday on TNC Radio Live at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's building strong minds. Welcome back. You're listening to Tail Lights with the Bombs. And I have to apologize. Larry was going to be on tonight, but the poor guy is fighting a migraine. But we just want to remind you that coming up next in the next hour is going to be Clutch Time Sports with Ivan and Josh. So they are awesome guys. And we hope that you guys are going to stick around and listen, especially if you're a sports fan. And Bobby is my guest for tonight. I just wanted you to get a chance also to remind everybody what, where they can find you on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we are LGBTQ plus truck driver network. There actually is a page and then there's actually is a group as well. Um, the page does also have t-shirts, memorabilia, different things you can uh, buy on there. Um, and we have, um, you know, a slogan. And one of the things I really push all the time is all drivers means all. And that t-shirt can also be found on there. Um, but the thing is uh, it's, it's just, the truth you know all drivers does it should mean all when we are walking through truck shows and when we see all those ads for a a new driver or someone who wants to hire you you know everybody throws this word around all very loosely all the time and um when i kept seeing that that was that was really one of these things i started to group and then started seeing all the support and we changed to being a nonprofit and and it just stuck, it, it stuck with me and started growing. And I'm like, you know, everyone uses this all, all the time, but how true is it? How true is it? You know, there's companies that won't hire you because you're um, color of your skin. There's companies that won't hire you because they want to judge the outside book because you have too many tattoos or, or whatever it may be. So I started thinking about that and I'm like, you know, we have so much judgment out in the world today we don't need all that like so that's what's one of the things that we do is we're just a we're a home we're a home for people to come and just be yourself um lgbtq or not so that's one of my favorite things about and the most rewarding thing is just meeting everyone the smiles the the friendships the the, you know cookouts and bonfires and uh, we go, we love all of amusement parks. We go, we meet at amusement parks and all the things that we do across the country um, has nothing to do with our sexuality or gender or anything. When we meet, we, we meet as drivers to have fun and get away from the road. Everyone knows what that's like. You know, the road's overwhelming at times. So Absolutely. And I, one of the things I, personally for me, it seems like the more that I speak out and, and about the LGBTQ uh, community is that there's so many drivers that have reached out to me that have to live their life secretly for fear of their company finding out. So when they have an organization like yours that they can go to, to find the support and to find the camaraderie and people that, you know, they, they can talk to freely because they're leaving such a secret life. I think it's, it's a great thing. And I think there needs to be more resources out there. Yeah, there really does. And we're, we're trying to, 
be the one to put them out there. So, you know, um, we're trying to work on diversity and inclusion videos and updating some of the videos. That's kind of like the old corny ones that we all have, all have to set through for, you know, when we get hired somewhere, right. and we're just trying to work, you know, trying to work on the things like that. And, um, but it, it's, it's about living your life. You know, uh, one of the most rewarding things that happened to me was there was a gentleman that came to me and he said, I thank you. And I kind of was like, what are you talking about? And he said, um, just for living your life and being yourself. He said, you influenced me. He said, I've been a driver for 30 years on the road. And um, during that 30 years, my husband has never been my husband, even to my family or my work. He said, I'm an owner operator. And um, I finally came out because of your videos and your pictures and just being able to, you live your life so freely. And, and I was, I realized in that moment how much of an impact just posting pictures and living my life every day has on somebody. Um, that was the first time someone came out and I was like, here's a man that's been a driver for 30 years and, and his roommate was really his husband, but even to his family, his work, he couldn't tell anybody that. So he finally came out and it was because of our pictures and because we posted pictures with Disney ears at, at you know, at Disney and Mickey ears. And I don't know. So it, I, I think sometimes people don't, that's why the page is there. I, I, I always tell everybody, share your life, share your life. You never know who's going to see it and how much impact it gives them. So we share our life very freely with selfies with all the drivers I meet and, and everywhere that we go and pride events. And then um, I try to bridge a gap basically between, you know, the trucking world and, and LGBTQ establishments and, and try to support as many people as possible. Um, so it's just what, you know, sh sharing your life, it, it doesn't seem like much when you post that picture or you made that meal and but you don't realize what someone's going through in that bubble when they get in that truck um it's really easy to withdraw yourself from the outside world and Absolutely. Um, so yeah i just didn't realize how fast that people uh you know look at your pictures and it, it's just way more than you think and ricky would have been here tonight but he is here technically but uh ricky's really shy he doesn't really he plays <laughs> video games and I'm the mouth. I'm the one that talks all the time. So yeah, that's how it is with me and Larry. He's believe it or not, he doesn't come across as shy, but he is. He's very shy, and I'm the mouth. So I'm with you. <laughs> I want to thank yeah, you so is, much. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. I was gonna say the same thing. I, I really thank you guys for doing this. And um, you know, before you judge someone, just think about them. Think, think about all the stuff that they're doing. We're doing the same thing, same brokers, same, or we're doing the same things. So yes. it's hard enough. Just lead with love, lead, lead with helping others. And if you need a place to talk openly or freely, I mean, you can even call me up. I don't care. I have people that call me all the time and, or, or come to the page and they can just be themselves. And that's, that's all, that's what it's about. Make sure you tell everybody again where they can find you on Facebook also so that they can yeah. bother you. So mine is Bobby Coffee Lloyd. That's my personal Facebook. But you also can find us on the LGBTQ plus truck driver network. And um, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, um, pretty much on everything. Uh, there's even a YouTube channel. So, um, but yeah, it's LGBTQ plus truck driver network. And I know it seems a little long, but <laughs> Absolutely. I wanted to I wanted to stand out a little bit, um, you know, so I was like, well, okay, we got to do something different. Um, there's a bunch of groups out there and I support all those other groups and all the other organizations because together we all can make a difference. And Absolutely. I, there's too much bickering between back and forth sometimes. And I, I think that we need to lead by example. So I Absolutely. try to just make that work. Thank you. Thank you so much. And please be sure that you guys stop by to see Bobby. And don't forget, you can also find Larry and I on Facebook on A Trucker's View, where we live stream our life out on the road. And then also our personal page, Married to the Road. And we're going to have another great guest speaker with us next week and probably have our call-in option. So be sure you guys come back next week to listen to us for Tail Lights on the Bombs. And hopefully by then, Larry's feeling a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Bobby, and you guys have a great week. You too.